So what is the sulcus and what is a gyrus and why do these terms even matter? Sulci comes from the Latin word sulcus, which means trench, ditch, or wrinkle. It's like the result of taking some dough in your hands and pulling on it, and this creates a sort of groove. Gyri are the folds in brain, and so they're generally next to the grooves or sulci. And gyrus is a Latin word meaning circle or circuit, and it's describing something that's rounded, having a bend or curve in it. But why do we have names for these grooves and bends in the brain? What is the reason besides, you know, scientists are just compelled to label and name everything? But if you name these grooves and folds, we can map where certain structures are much more easily. And it's important, especially when you have certain regions that have been known to be associated with distinctive functions. For example, the precentral gyrus hosts the primary motor cortex of the brain. This is the region that's working whenever you decide to move your body. Me gesticulating like this, you know, choosing to move my limbs at will, that's only possible because of the primary motor cortex. Ultimately, there's going to be slight variations from person to person on where a certain structure may be. And so by having these landmarks and being able to identify them properly, it goes a long way in establishing commonality between individual people. And from there, you can talk about doing other types of research and understand what region is responsible for or associated with what function. So the thing about gyri and sulci is that the folds increase the surface area of the cortex and by folding something up you can pack in more surface area more tightly one reason why there's this creation of grooves and folds or sulci and gyri is because there's a difference in the growth rates of the gray matter and white matter in the brain so if you think back to uh, mitochondria, if there's one thing everybody knows about mitochondria, it's this one thing. What is the mitochondria again? It is, yes, that's correct. It's the powerhouse of the cell. Clap it up, clap it up, you guys did it. So that's not where we're stopping though. That's not where we're stopping. The point is, is that how is the mitochondria so energy packed? How is it able to produce so much energy? Well, the answer lies in Christe. Not Christy, but Christe. Christe are these inner folds that line the membrane of uh, mitochondria. And the function of these folds is that they increase the amount of area that chemical reactions can take place. And so you can have many more reactions along that surface than you would if you had just tried to cram in something that was not folded up. And so if we go back to our example of the human brain, what we can see is that there's a lot of folds. When we have folding going on, that may, brings these cells closer together. They make more contact points. And so that not only facilitates communication and creates these distinct functional areas called lobes, but they also serve a purpose of increasing the computational power because more of these neurons are gonna be connected to each other. That's why if you look at certain animals whose brains don't have as many cortical folds, you won't see them having as much computational power and you know it's, it's a less complex structure. It's the grooves that add the spice. So yeah, it's pretty cool to notice these things like when you're studying biology or neuroscience or anything, that's, uh, that's something to put in your pocket for the future. Cortical folds help increase the surface area of the brain matter. And because of those, you have closer, more facilitated connections with the neurons. Thank you for tuning in. Um, appreciate you. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.